a real quick yes, no, and then we'll have a follow-up question on this. Is the size of the annual U.S. budget deficit and national debt a problem? Yes. Yes, good. All right. Absolutely. All right. Yes. Yes. The number one issue. Number one issue. Okay. All right. That's a big YMCA. Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. IRS has to be abolished. It has become a monster for each of us. I would also um, uh, be supportive of abolishing the Department of Education, uh, Department of Energy. We can go down to those whole list. Here's the issue. Oh, we are in a mess in this country because we are forsaking our Constitution. And either we are going to have a Constitution and abide by a constitutional rule of law, or we're not. But what we cannot do is just ignore it pretend as though it doesn't exist and trash it and throw it aside. There are, as I mentioned a while ago, 18 areas that, that the Constitution authorizes, mandates Congress to have jurisdiction over. Everything else is to be left to the states and to the people. Therefore, you have multiple uh, departments, education, energy, EPA, multiple departments that are absolutely unconstitutional and yet is continuing to develop a monster that, that is over-regulating our lives, over-taxing our lives, and intruding in every area of our lives. And so we've got to get back to a constitutional rule of law which would eliminate many departments. The Supreme Court ultimately gets to decide what's constitutional or not. The Supreme Court has not declared any of these departments to be unconstitutional. They are all within the power of Congress to enact. The problem that we have is we have a dichotomy in this country. We have people who want the various programs that have been adopted because they benefit from them. Yet on the other side, they don't want to pay the taxes that it takes to be able to pay for them. We have to find a way to resolve the split personality in the American <coughs> electorate. And I think that there is, a, in fact, a way to do that by passing a law which says you cannot spend more than the government takes in. And, and the problem is, we've got, you're, you're, everybody's right, we're not overtaxed. We've got spending problems. And we don't have jobs. The number one threat to this country is that $16 trillion debt that's soon going to be $17 trillion. There's programs we could cut, but that's not going to get you a job tomorrow. What you need to do is cut taxes. You need to cut taxes on small businesses and on families. Capital gains, that's right. It needs to be cut. It was raised. To, it needs to go back down. The estate tax. Folks can't pass on businesses to the next generation because they're too busy having to sell that business to pay the taxes. And that's not right. That's not America. I get rid of the, I get rid of the Department of Education, Labor, Transportation. I get rid of Homeland Security. Why? We have the FBI. It's an over-duplication of services. We have the F FBI that's supposed to take care of us here in the United States and the CIA performs. I donate the, the Department of Commerce, Energy. I would downsize the Department of Defense, like uh, Mr. Simpson said. We, we have bases we don't need. We need to keep the strategic ones and the rest of them we need to get rid of. I'd also, the interior, I would downsize the interior, health and human services, and I would return other agencies back to the state level, like the EPA, the FDA, OSHA, and Park Service. And I would make Social Security and Medicare needs-based. Tip a deal as a compromise. It's a compromise that doesn't work anymore. The one thing we know for sure is doing nothing is not an option. You have a choice. Are you going to round up and deport 12 to 15 million people who are now in the country undocumented? Um, or are you going to allow some of them to stay? Um, I don't think that given the economic uh, and the political consequences of trying to deport 12 to 15 million people that that's what we're going to do. Uh, I don't think that that's really uh, uh, the best thing for our economy. So that leaves us with a choice of who do we decide to deport and who do we decide to allow to stay. Um, I think that we need to allow people to stay who are willing to work and uh, pay taxes because right now we have an underground economy where 
many illegal aliens are uh, taken advantage of because of the threat of being deported and they're being paid under the table so that they don't pay taxes and they don't pay Social Security. We need to have a guest worker program that allows them to work legally. I think uh, we're debating the wrong question. To me, the real question on this whole issue ought to focus around what is in the best interest of America, not what's in the best interest of the, the illegal aliens and so forth. This is our house. What's in the best interest of America? And, you know, when you look at it from that perspective, obviously, I mean, we've got to secure the borders. That's in our best interest. We don't know who's coming in here. Uh, we, we've got to abide by the laws that we've established. These things have already been said. But you know, like, like the others, I'm uh, adamantly opposed to amnesty. Uh, you know, and specifically, no, under no circumstances should we be giving economic benefit to those who are here illegally. It just doesn't even make sense. Uh, likewise, we have a number of cities and states that are trying to become sanctuaries for these illegals. I think federal funding ought to be withheld from those cities. We need to e-verify all workers. I mean all workers. If you hire somebody to do your law, you better have some documentation on them that they've been e-verified or you'll be fined. That's what needs to happen. We need to have enforcement of our current law when it comes to e-verify. E we also need no government benefits for those who are here illegally, whether it be education, welfare, or health care. We need to sub start, stop subsidizing the illegal behavior. We don't need a repeat of 1986 when, when Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill made the Grand Camp Compromise. We'll secure the borders and then we'll have some amnesty. What we got was amnesty and no security. Position that we as Americans are unfamiliar with. Our allies no longer respect us and our enemies no longer fear us. And it's because of the lack of leadership from our president. You know, I believe that we have got to have a strong national defense. That is the number one thing that we have as a country. As well as important our founding fathers. That was why we were created and for liberty. But we have got to um, focus on that. You know, our, I believe that, um, you know, you won't have to do it. One has to wonder, um, you know, I'm sure Syria's had the gas for a while and they've been bombing each other, but um, had we been stronger on the war during Reagan's presidency, would we have seen these innocent people attacked and killed?